Good morning, scholars. Today we are continuing our journey through Fars Homeric Greek, a book for beginners, looking at the first part of Lesson 17 of Far, which will exposit how to form the imperfect and the first aorist of middle passive verbs. Or I should say, the imperfect and first aorist um, in the middle passive voice. Okay, so we've already learned or seen the middle endings of the primary tenses. That is, tenses referring to present or future time. And those are the same endings that we'll see later when we deal with the subjunctive. But so the ones on the left, my, psi, tai, meta, ste, and intai should be familiar with you, to you, as long as along with the duals ston, ston. But now we're embarking on looking at the first aorist and the imperfect. And since these are tenses that refer to past time, they're the secondary tenses and will have a different set of endings. And those endings will be main, so, to, meta, sta, and into. So you see the endings are very similar, except you replace the alpha iota with an omicron or in the first person singular, just main for my. So these are not hard to do. The interesting thing is the dual, the duals, nominative, accusative, ston, but then uh, in the other cases, stain. Okay, so uh, if we look at the, so that results in just giving us the personal endings of the secondary tenses. So once again, regarding primary and secondary tenses, there are two classes of tenses in the indicative. The primary or principal tenses, which are the present and the perfect expressing present time, the future and the future perfect expressing future time. Then there are the secondary or historical tenses. These are the imperfect, the pluperfect, and the aorist expressing past time. The secondary tenses have an augment prefixed in Attic Greek. As I've said, as we've seen, Homer is in the earlier stage of the language so he can dispense with the augment. So it's very important as a Greek student, if you're asked what tense a verb is in, you never say the past tense. You never say, oh, it's in the past, which you could get away with in an English class, but no. There are numerous past tenses in Greek, so you always want to be specific and identify it as imperfect, aorist, and even as first or second aorist, uh, rather than just saying past tense. Okay, so our endings again are main, so, to, meta, sta, and unto. So if we add the thematic vowel, which we need to form the imperfect, as we'll see in a second, we have amen, u, and we'll talk about that phonetic operation, eto, omata, este, and onto. So again, amen, u, eto, omata, este, onto. Now, so the imperfect tense, when, in, when forming the imperfect tense, the stem to which these endings are attached is identical to the stem of the present. As a secondary tense, marking past time, the imperfect prefixes the augment e, or the other forms of the augment that we've talked about. Um, so we come up with elu amen, elu amen. I was ransoming, I used to ransom, I tried ransoming. And I have these entries for Smice to talk about the specific, conceptually, what each of those translations represent in their special sense of the imperfect. I was ransoming, I used to ransom, and I tried ransoming. So check out these uh, sections of Smythe, 1890, 1893, and 1895. So as far as translating the uh, imperfect middle passive goes, we have eluomen, 
I was loosing for myself, or if it has a passive sense, I was being loosed. And uh, luel, and you'll see that um, Homer does not, uh, well, the sigma just disappears, which is what happens in the second singular. You are loosing for yourself, or you were being loosed. You were loosing for yourself, middle sense. You were being loosed, passive sense. Eluato, he was loosing for himself, or he was being loosed, passive tense. And then we have the uh, duels. You too were loosing for yourselves. You were being loosed, passive sense. They too were loosing for themselves. Um, they were being loosed, passive sense. Okay, eluomesta, Homer can insert a sigma here. We were loosing for ourselves. We were being loosed. Eluesta, you were loosing for yourselves. You were being loosed. Eluonto, they were loosing for themselves. They were being loosed. So again, it's just important to stress that these um, endings in the imperfect tense can carry either a middle sense or a passive sense. They can be used either way. Thus, these alternative translations. Okay, on to the first aorist. The first aorist stem is formed by adding the suffix sa to the verb stem. So um, we come up with lu sa main, lu so, we'll talk about that phonetic operation, lu sa to, lu sa meta, lu sa ste, and lu san to. So here we have the operation of the insertion of the tense suffix, the sigma, along with the alpha dominant of the first aorist system in the indicative or, and elsewhere. But the second singular uh, calls upon some special rules, which are treated in detail in um, uh, section B of this section of Smythe where he tells you that the sigma omicron stays in all the pluperfects and in the imperfect of me verbs, but elsewhere it loses its sigma. Okay, so the law that's operating here is that the sigma disappears and becomes between the alpha and the omicron, and the result is an omega. So Smythe talks about the rule of sigma disappearing between vowels, that general rule at section 120, and if you look at section 51a, you'll see in his description of what happens in contraction of vowels that alpha and omicron, the O overpowers everything and you end up with omega. So therefore, the um, second person singular in usually if you're doing with Attic or uh, New Testament would just be this O, although as we saw a second ago, Homer can just give you the uh, uh oh, and have the S disappear. But the alpha and the omicron not contract. So, and we see that here. So, with the inflection and translation of the first aorist, middle slash passive, we have elusamein, I loosed for myself, middle sense, or was loosed, passive sense. Elusao, or eluso. You loosed for yourself, middle sense, were loosed, passive sense. Elusato, he loosed for himself, was loosed, passive tense. Elusaston, you too loosed for yourselves, or you too were loosed, passive sense. Elusastain, they too, those two loosed for themselves, those two were loosed. Elusamesta, we loosed for ourselves, or were loosed, passive sense. Elusaste, elusaste, you loosed for yourselves, you were loosed. Elusanto, elusanto, they loosed for themselves, or passive sense, were loosed, they were loosed. So, elusamen, elusao, elusato, Elusaston, Elusastain, Elusamesta, Elusaste, 
elustanto. Now, um, here is Smythe's introduction to the Eros Ten Tense, the Eros Tense at 1923. Uh, he says of the Eros that it expresses the mere occurrence of an action in the past. The action is regarded as an event or single fact without reference to the length of time it occupied. So that's the distinction between the aorist and the imperfect. The aor aorist is just a point of time, whereas the imperfect will always have some length of time. He kept asking. He tried to ask. Something, an act that's occurring uh, like a video would occur, unfolds like a video, whereas the aorist is, on the other hand, a snapshot. So we have these examples, the first from Thucydides. The Corsairians were victorious and destroyed 15 ships. So even though that action probably took hours to, to, to unwind, he's just presenting it as it was a single event. And Nike san ho ke kurai kai naus pimte kai deka diapteiran. So, and Nike san and diapteiran are, um, are first errors. So, uh, to uh, one nine two three a, the uses of the aorist may be explained by the figure of a point in time, and so you can have the ingressive aorist, which represents the starting point. You know, he became president on March blah 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 blah. You have the end point, which is the result of aorist, or the whole action from beginning to the end, concentrated to a point in time. And that's the complex of or aorist uh, that Smythe gives examples of at 1927, and which is represented in this example, Enike san hoi kekuraioi kai naus pente kai deka di epteiran. So um, Smythe's discussion of the tenses is quite uh, elaborate, and you'll want to look at that far, far down the road. But for now, all you have to have is this idea that the errors is a snapshot in time. Okay, so we'll end today with this wonderful image. I'm not sure where it's from. It looks like a fresco of the priest, Chrysais, supplicating Agamemnon. And so this is what's described at Kailiseto Pantas Akaius, Atre Ida de Malista Duo, Cosme Torre Laon. And I'm pretty sure that um, Agamemnon Nimnon is the one setting. I would hesitate to say that the naked figure next to him is Menelaus. That would his brother. That would be I couldn't explain the nakedness, but I'm not an art historian. And so you, but you see the people behind there with these spears and the shields. Those are the Achaeus representing the soldiers themselves. And you see even the servant women carrying their uh, vessels which represent the women in the camp, one of which is no doubt Crusade's daughter. Okay, there we have it. So um, good luck, keep working hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being interested. Please do subscribe and uh, enjoy your day. Bye-bye.